Sony creates a brand new image sensor to beat Canon's dual pixel AF. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for once again joining me for tea time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and that is it. Hope you're all hanging out with me, having your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, talking tech, talking video, talking photo. Today is going to be a combination of like tech and photo. It is a Sony day today, and they have produced a brand new image sensor that will directly compete against Canon's dual pixel AF in regards to autofocus. We know Canon's been doing a really great job with dual pixel AF. They've been trading on it, let's say, for the last couple of years, and Sony's autofocus has just been really spot on lately. And I wanna get into some of that. And I wanna get into this brand new image sensor with you. So before we dive into this subject, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. And if you got anything from this video and you wanna say thank you, there's a little button down here that says thank you or become a member of the channel. That would be also awesome. Anyways, guys, so let's jump right into this new Sony sensor. I was reading an article over at the Nikkei newspaper, and this article had to do with Sony's new semiconductor strategy, let's call it, their image sensor strategy. And I do think that this is something that should worry Canon just a little bit. Let me give you a backstory. Sony is looking to capture 60% of the image sales or production and sales market. And they were getting close to that, but they fell back a little bit during the last couple of years because we had the virus, we have a lot of shortages. And what has happened was, is it gave Samsung a means of pushing forward and almost equaling them. Samsung, if you don't know, is out of South Korea. So, Sony's intent here is to be able to bump into that 60% of production and sales in the semiconductor industry, or I should say specifically in the sensor industry or sensor market by 2025. That's their goal. And this new sensor is one of the means for them to do it. Sony Semiconductor Solutions. Sony Semiconductor Solutions. That's a tongue twister, isn't it? Anyway, Sony Semiconductor Solutions is the semiconductor arm of Sony Group, the main corporation. Well, that arm put out a press release as of last week. It talked about this new sensor and how it should revolutionize autofocus. Now, this Octa PD is said to be created by Sony to enhance or speed up autofocus so that the autofocus can happen in extremely low light or in extremely bright light. And we know this is a problem even with Canon's dual pixel AF. If something's very bright, sometimes it has a hard time locking in on focus. And the same thing when it comes to low light. It's hard to find a subject when there's not a lot of luminance. You can't see where the contrast is and hence phase detection should allow that to happen, but it doesn't as well as it should. Now, Sony says their new Octa PD is going to be better, let's say, than even Canon's dual pixel AF. Now, what Sony was quoted in saying is that the new system will, quote, simultaneously focus on bright and dark subjects in a frame for better autofocus lockup. Once again, that is something that we all are looking for. Now, being a Canon shooter, dual pixel AF has always been quite good. And I've always said it's probably one of the best out there. And it was the very best for many, many years until Sony's latest releases. And I think Sony is doing quite well. Now, the Octa PD is very similar to Canon's dual pixel AF or DPAF, in which every single pixel on that image sensor has two separate light sensitive diodes. And each one has its own micro lens so that it could work together or separately. I think that this is very, very powerful. And that's what Canon has done since day one. But the problem is, is even with Canon's dual pixel AF, it does struggle in high light and low light. So maybe Sony has created something very similar to Canon's dual pixel AF, but just simply refined it. 
Personally, I am one of those guys that believe in a better mousetrap. Just because the mousetrap is already out there, that doesn't mean that you can't refine it and make it better. Matter of fact, it's very similar to what I did when I created the Aurora camera care lens and sensor cleaning kits. Are there other sensor cleaning kits out there? Yes. Why is mine better? Well, it just simply makes it easier, period. It takes the guesswork out of cleaning your sensor. You don't have to worry about how much liquid that you're using, right? They're already pre-moistened. It just is simple. And that's the way I look at things. Once again, there is always a mousetrap, but there's always someone out there to build a better, a refined mousetrap. And I think that's very, very important. Other people will look at this and say, oh, they just copied Canon. Well, maybe they're doing stuff that's very similar to Canon, but what they're saying here is we're going to make it better. Now, how they're doing it, maybe within, maybe it's with algorithmic equations behind the scenes on how it actually does it. I really don't know. But the bottom line is it's almost identical or it is identical. Now, what they continue saying or they're quoted in saying is the Octa PD is unique in that it can acquire phase difference in all pixels of long exposure, medium exposure, and short exposure during HDR operation and realize high-speed AF operation regardless of brightness of subject. That tells the whole story there. It will be able to lock on a subject no matter how bright the subject is. And what they said, long exposure, medium exposure, or short exposures and HDR. Now, if you didn't know it, this technology is already out there. The only difference is they're saying that it is going to be moving from a small sensor into a large sensor. Where is it currently? Well, if you take a look at a Sharp R7 smartphone, this technology or these sensors are already in there. Once again, the difference is, is this announcement is saying that we're going to move it from a tiny sensor that we see in a smartphone into a larger sensor or into a proper camera sensor, like a micro four thirds or an APS-C sensor or possibly even a full frame. So Sony is definitely moving this technology forward. Now, like I said from the beginning, should Canon be worried about this? Should they move their quad pixel AF forward? If you didn't know it, quad pixel AF is something that I talked about probably about six, seven months ago when I said that I believe that the R1 that comes out, which will be the equivalent to a 1D, but in mirrorless, will have quad pixel AF instead of dual pixel AF. Basically now doubling the amount of photodiodes in there, right? So that it can have even a better autofocus system on, let's say, even a larger sensor if need be. Well, I don't know. Thinking about this, I would say yes. Canon should be worried about this because now I believe Sony is 100% on par. And to be completely honest with you, I personally think that Sony's autofocus system, as of right now, as of today, is already on par as good as Canon's autofocus system. That's my personal opinion. Right now, I'm shooting on a Sony, right here, the ZV-1. It's locked in on my eye, right? This is the right eye because I'm turned slightly to the left. If I turn the other way, it immediately locks up to this eye. It is fantastic. Its eye autofocus is amazing. It not only finds the eyes, but it understands the depth of the eye. So when one eye gets closer, it immediately snaps to that eye. Fantastic. If we move over to this camera, Canon, this is the Canon EOS R. It is also finding my eye. And if I switch sides, it does move, but it doesn't move as well as this ZV-1. It is close. And yes, is it locking in on my face? It is. It's finding me. And I deliberately, guys, I deliberately put a face back here on this screen. You see this girl right here back on this screen? I did that on purpose to see if I can fool the AF system in either the Canon or in the Sony. And I'll take a look at it during post-production when I'm doing an edit. Maybe I'll put something down here saying which one worked or which one lost its mind. But I have a feeling they'll both do a good job. Now, with the Sony ZV-1, it's looking directly at me most of the time. But even when I look to the side, 
does it immediately lock over here? And I think it does. And the same thing with the Canon. When I move from here, looking directly at the Canon and move and look at the Sony, is it also staying with me? I have a feeling that it will. Once again, I think that these cameras or these systems, let's call them PD systems or phase detect systems, are literally on par already. So if this new Sony system is even better, I really do think Canon should worry because Canon has been selling their systems, selling their cameras based on dual pixel AF for many, many, many years. And most of the photographers out there know how good it is. So as we see Sony get better and better and better, that's one more ding in the Canon armor saying, listen, Sony is as good, if not even better at this point. Move into a Sony if you're a professional, right? Not that there's not a lot of professionals out there using Sony, which there are, but it has always been one of those things where when I first saw the very first mirrorless Sony camera, I can just tell you for certain it was complete, absolute garbage. Autofocus was abysmal, atrocious. And as time went on, it just got better and better and better. And as of now, their system is just dead on. I can feel confident that it's going to lock in on me. Now, to interject a little bit more real world besides this, where I'm just sitting here in studio, the last couple of days on Thursday and Friday, I was not in studio recording any YouTube videos, right? So you didn't see me. Well, I was on set doing TV production, basically. And we moved from EVA ones to the Sony FX6. We had some FX9s, now they're FX6. They're both awesome systems. And a couple of the cameras that was a four camera shoot, we left on autofocus. And this, remember, is for TV. It is sometimes live. And to rely on autofocus really is a big thing. Now, you still need a cam op, someone behind there to make sure that it doesn't lose its mind. And matter of fact, what we did find out was the guest, let's say, um, was wearing a pair of glasses. And what I was noticing is every once in a while, if he turned a certain way, the FX6 would lose his eye or lose his glasses. So that being said, it is not perfect as of yet, but maybe with this new Octa PD, it will be. So anyways, I just wanted to share this with you and give you my thoughts on it. But more importantly, I want your thoughts. In the comment area below this video, let me know what you think. Do you think that Canon should be worried? And if so, why? Do you think that Sony is already on par or even better? What do you think? What do you think? If you enjoyed this video, even in the least, please consider throwing it a thumbs up. That would be very, very helpful. And share it with your community. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, why the hell not? Subscribe and click this little bell icon over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jpristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Love you all.